Welcome to the Smarter Science of Slim, the scientifically proven program where you eat more and exercise less to burn fat and boost health. Eat smarter, exercise smarter, live better. I am so ready for that. Hey everybody, Jonathan Baylor and Carrie Brown back with another Smarter Science of Slim show. What up, Carrie Brown? Hello, Jonathan. <laughs> Carrie, Carrie uh, dared me to do my falsetto voice during an introduction, so what did you think about my falsetto introduction? I think you're hysterical. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, that's totally fair. Well, I am a little hysterical today, Carrie, because one of our uh, lovely, lovely listeners forwarded me a report that was put out by actually a, a financial group called Credit Suisse on the financial and epic economic implications of insanity. And this report is just amazing. I wanted to share some of the key takeaways with our listeners and, and open it up for discussion. I think you mean Swiss, but never mind. Carry on. Was well, that, I don't know. So <laughs> listeners, if you want to find this report, uh, search for credit and then the word s-u-i-s-s-e credit suisse was it suisse okay americans would probably say credit suisse and get everybody confused <laughs> okay well anyway the report is free and however you pronounce it the facts in it are still the same so i'm just going to start from the very beginning here and the the report is about sugar obesity all kinds of fun stuff but here we go from the top all right carrie are you ready so First, this report tells us that the most recent estimates around the annual costs to the healthcare system globally due to the obesity epidemic are in excess of, are you ready for this? 600 billion US dollars. That's billion with a B. That's a lot of zeros. It's actually so many zeros, they didn't put it in the report. They just wrote 600 in the word billion because it is too many. They would have ran out of ink. Hey, government, don't we have a budget crisis? Good there Lord. it is. <laughs> 600 billion. Now, okay, but it gets, it gets worse. So that's just obesity. Now, type 2 diabetes is now affecting close to 370 million people worldwide. And the costs of it on the global healthcare system are, Carrie Brown... 470 billion US dollars. Which to put that in perspective, represents over 10% of all health, all healthcare costs just on diabetes alone. Wow. That's so, staggering. Well, and Carrie, this is the this is the thing when people recently we had an episode we talked about candy and Halloween and everyone wants to say, oh, you know, it's a like fun moderation, yada yada yada. Don't be an extremist. Don't take this. You know what's an extreme thing? It's pretty extreme that 370 million people worldwide have a f potentially fatal disease called type 2 diabetes and that the combined global economic burden of obesity and diabetes are now topping a trillion dollars. That's pretty extreme. Well, I think so. I think that's pretty extreme. Very extreme. So more shocking statistics. And again, this is from the Credit Suisse <laughs> or Swiss <laughs> report. So check this out. So in the in the USA alone, this Carrie, this is one of my favorites in quotations. In the USA alone, the healthcare costs tied to just type two diabetes. And remember, this isn't the diabetes you're born with. This is the diabetes that's caused from insane edible products are estimated at $140 billion. That's the US alone. Now, obviously, Carrie, that is a high number, but to illustrate just how shockingly high that is, we gotta hold it relative to something, right? Because when numbers get this big, $140 billion, like obviously that's high, but how high is it, right? Mm -hmm. So the, the researchers did this amazing comparison where they said, okay, $140 billion, for type 2 diabetes, 
But what about tobacco, right? Like tobacco, good Lord, we'd never allow it in schools. We, we don't allow our children to be exposed to secondhand smoke. It's just this terrible, oh my God, tobacco. Like there's these public service campaigns. There's warning labels on it. I mean, certainly tobacco must have a higher economic burden than uh, diabetes, right? Nah. Wrong answer. And it's not even close, friends. $140 billion for type 2 diabetes compared to $90 billion for tobacco-related healthcare costs. And that's tobacco-related, so that's just not smoking. That's all forms, like chewing tobacco, everything, dip. All tobacco-related healthcare costs, $50 billion lower than just Type 2 diabetes. Forget about overweight and obesity. That's just type 2 diabetes. Wow. Wow. Oh, we got more, Carrie. We got more. <laughs> we got more. So, folks. These numbers are just huge, though. I just, I really am a bit stunned. The, oh. the, 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 just, the numbers are enormous. And it gets, so, so we, we got a lot of mo. We got a lot of mo. So, those numbers, those giant numbers we just talked about, Carrie, are growing at a rate for type 2 diabetes of at about 4% per year. That's huge. Again, to put that in perspective, that's n two to four times the rate that obesity and overweight are growing. So we know we have an obesity and an overweight epidemic, but type two diabetes, which again, remember, like you can die of type two diabetes and you will die of it if you don't receive proper medical care, is growing at two to four times the speed of the obesity epidemic. Wow. I'm saying wow a lot in this podcast. Well, hopefully the listeners are too, because this is the kind, when we talk about, Carrie, this about being so much more than the scale and how this calorie math is just ridiculous. Like this, this illustrates not only is it about so much more for us, for us each as individuals to, to manifest, you know, the glory that's within us and to live on purpose and to not be, you know, worried about the number on the scale, but just in terms of social consciousness, you know, now we're, we're, we're trying to be eco-friendly with the environment and we want to be socially conscious and aware. The, a world where like by 2020, the annual cost to the healthcare system globally will reach $700 billion for type 2 diabetes alone affecting nearly, this is by 2020, so right around the corner, half a trillion people. That is... Again, I, I can't even I, I can't comprehend that number. I, I, I can't. So it, it, it's friends, it, it really is time to transcend these these myths and marketing and, and to seek out sanity, because this is literally if for no other reason, it is the socially responsible thing to do to go sane. So. Carry some other interesting data. And again, friends, I would so encourage you to just check out this report for yourself because it's, it's, it's amazing. So what are some of these sources for added sugar in specifically the American diet? So carry a full third of added sweeteners in the American diet is coming from soft drinks. Pop. Down with pop. And then coming up next would be sugars and candy. So that's about... 16%. So just, just to put that in perspective, Carrie, so if you took sugars and candy, cakes, cookies, and pies, those are the next two categories, and you combined them, it's still not as high as regular soft drinks. So if regular soft drinks contribute to a third of all added sweetener consumption, can you imagine the global economic benefit and the interpersonal benefit and just, I mean, because not only does it stink when we're sick because we were sick, but like when you're healthy, just think of all the glorious stuff you can do. If all we did was eliminate soft drinks, full, full sugar soft drinks, can you imagine how much of, of a more glorious and healthy world we would have? That's, I, I just, I'm still stunned by those big numbers, to be honest with you. <laughs> Carrie, I, I, still I'm, reeling. <laughs> I am still reeling. But also the fact that that a third of our sugar consumption comes from pop, just pop. It shows you what an enormous business that must be. 
and why it's so important to the pop manufacturers to keep on going. And you do have to start questioning, Carrie, when the when the health burden, when the when the causes of death, when the economic burden of these insane food products outstrips tobacco, and when the science is clear that many of these products are more addictive than tobacco, no one is saying ban anything, just like we don't ban tobacco, but we also don't hand out packs of cigarettes in schools. So I just don't, how much clearer does this need to be before the people who are in positions to protect us actually start taking steps to protect us? I, I, I just, I'm stunned. So let's, let's keep going. Let's keep going. So to again, put in perspective, just how shocking of an insane situation we are dealing with the, the global burden of, of disease report. There's a report called the global burden of disease. <laughs> yes. Yes. It came out at the end of 2012. So relatively recent has now shown that obesity is a more significant health crisis globally. Globally, this isn't in the US, this is globally than hunger and or uh, malnourishment, meaning that we now live in a world where there is more suffering due to the overconsumption of insane edible products than there is from a shortage of food. Wow. I mean, that, that's like, right, I mean, I only a few years ago, we were talking about like end world hunger, end world hunger. We literally need to chant the opposite thing now, which is end the worldwide insanity that, yeah, it's great. It, it, less people are hungry, but when we have a, a, a greater number of people dying and suffering because of an overabundance of non-food, I mean... Carrie, the other the other interesting implication there is, wow, like we have the distribution systems in place and we have the corporate power to feed so many people. What if we could feed them with sane foods instead of insane, addictive, deadly, insane edible products? The results don't bear thinking about. Well, they do, but in a good way. So it's it's just shocking, folks. And now one of the one of the other just shifting gears a little bit here in terms of this report. One of the other things I really liked about this report is it shown shore shined. I'm not sure. It's such a shone, shone, whatever. <laughs> Credit Suisse. There we go. That was perfect. Well done, Sean. Sean a light. Okay. So here, but here, so as 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 lovely as this report is. It provides an example of how deep the problem and these calorie myths go because the report then goes on to say that the average consumption of calories in the U.S. is estimated currently to be about 3,700 calories per person per day. They also go on to say that the governing authorities estimate that on average, we should be consuming about 2,700 calories per day. Now, the conclusion that the study states is that one, added sweeteners contribute very much to that caloric excess, but two, that again, the, these obesity epidemic is, is being caused by an overconsumption of calories, which the data support, right? 3,700 calories per person per day when estimates should suggest that it should be more like 2,700. But I like these are incredibly intelligent people that put this report together, Carrie, but they all missed. Like they're burying the lead. Here's the lead. Like, again, this is, this is just a fact. If an individual believes and the data supports, if the data in fact supports, that the average American is consuming 3,700 calories per day, and that the average American should be consuming 2,700 calories per day, that means the average American is consuming 1,000 too many calories per day, which according to calorie math, 
means that the average American should gain a pound every three and a half days, which means the average American should gain two pounds every week, which means the average American should gain 104 pounds per year. And we are getting fatter, but we're not gaining 104 pounds a year. At all. Not even close to that. It, at, at all. So how, I mean, like that, that's, <laughs> we're really burying the lead here because if we have data that suggests that the average American is consuming a thousand extra calories per year. And when we actually look at the incidence of overweight, 98% of the weight we should be gaining, we're not gaining. Like, cause if you actually look at the data of the actual amount of weight we're gaining, Carrie, it's about 98% lower than would be predicted by the calorie math. That in and of itself seems like it should be headlines. Like why isn't every single American diabetic? Why isn't every single American obese? And why aren't we dramatically more obese? Why doesn't every single American weigh a thousand pounds? Because based on this data, we should. It's because there's something else going on here. And until we start to appreciate the, the, the depth of this problem, for example, Coca-Cola says, well, you know what? Uh, you can't really blame us. It's just 140 calories in a can of Coke. <laughs> it's, you can see how, how twisted of a world, when we have a world rooted in calories, not only does it not make any sense mathematically, but we end up in a world where these, these, these numbers, this healthcare crisis, like the model clearly doesn't work. It doesn't work biologically. It doesn't work metabolically. It doesn't work sociologically. It doesn't work economically. It's just, ah! Jonathan, take a breath, sweet pea. It makes me angry, Carrie. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> Practice with me. Uh, but no, I mean, so honestly, Carrie, I mean, what, when you, as, as a, as a non-scientist, when you hear these numbers, first, let's talk about the numbers of obesity and diabetes. Then let's talk about the numbers of that calorie mis miscalculated math. What, what does that, what does that make you think? The world's gone mad insane yes mad but why do you think it is carrie that this so these are this is reality N we're getting riled up about things that are causing a a one one hundredth of the problem that we're seeing here and this this is just people i mean like oh yeah you know this is a problem this is a huge problem like how how is it that this isn't getting more attention money elaborate please <laughs> it's a conspiracy what well, too does... many people earn too much money keeping us at a certain level of sick and a certain level of obese it's it's hard to disagree with that and it, it's hard to um not draw comparisons to tobacco a hundred years ago when there's a lot of money to be made convincing people that cigarettes aren't bad for you. But I mean, we were able to change that. So I'm hopeful that we can change this. Right. Except this is a problem that affects almost everybody on the planet. Whereas, you know, the number, the relative number of people who smoked versus those who didn't was very small we're now looking at an epidemic that touches almost everybody. And building off, again, Carrie, the, the, the important differences with smoking, one trap I want to empower our listeners to avoid is if you bring this up to your friends and family and your community and you use a smoking analogy, people might say, well, that's great. You can just stop smoking, but people need to eat. Okay, that, that is, a, that is a, a, a false dichotomy. No one who says don't smoke, they don't say don't breathe. They say don't smoke. They don't say don't, don't inhale. They say don't inhale smoke. No one here is saying don't eat. Obviously, we say the exact opposite, right, Carrie? We say eat more, but eat smarter. So the, the guidance is not, it, it's absolutely the case that we can just say don't eat edible starches and sweets that cause obesity and disease, just like we say, don't 
smoke. Not everyone has to eat, just like everyone has to breathe, but you do not have to eat starches and sweets. You absolutely don't. And it's not a, the other argument that you may hear is, well, we have to feed the world. That's also crap because you want to feed the world. Well, there's no better source of calories than natural fats, right? Grains aren't the only scalable plants in the world. Macadamia nuts, almonds, Brazil nuts, any kind of nut is a plant that provides a massive amount of calories, is not hormonally harmful, does not cause obesity, does not cause diabetes, and provides an abundance of fiber and required nutrients. So there really is no defense other than money, money, money. But Carrie, some things are more important than profits. And I think people dying and suffering on a level of billions and billions of, of dollars and hundreds of millions of people globally is, is just time to take action. I'm with you. I'm with you. That's why I spend all day making stuff up. <laughs> when you say making stuff up, you mean making up recipes, not... <laughs> making up recipes that taste better than the stuff people typically eat. I love it. Well, listeners, I hope... If anything, if you, I know if you listen to the show already, you're already motivated and you're already passionate about living your best life and helping people live theirs. But if you needed any more motivation, not only have you hopefully already destroyed your scale, and by the way, if you haven't already destroy, destroyed your scale, take a friend out in your backyard, have them hold up your cell phone, videotape yourself just beating the heck out of your scale and post that up on YouTube and let us know because we need to just start a worldwide uh, freedom push from these scales. And then we also need to, to motivate ourselves to be socially responsible at this point and literally heal the world because we are in need of it. Yes. Sound good? You're absolutely right. Well, friends, on that note, remember, eat smarter, exercise smarter, and live better. We'll chat with you soon. See ya. Wait, wait, don't stop listening yet. You can get fabulous free same recipes over at carrybrown.com. And don't forget your 100% free eating and exercise quick start program, as well as free, fun, daily tips delivered right into your inbox at baylorgroup.com. That's B-A-I-L-O-R group.com.